we're on the road to New England. That's where the Miami Dolphins' heads and focus are at on this beautiful late August day. The Miami Dolphins wrapped up their preseason on Saturday night by laying the wood and treating the Philadelphia Eagles like they were their little brother. It was a beatdown and it was fun for us, the loyal fans. There was plenty to learn from this game but I have what I think are the three most important things that came out of the game, it's true, the Eagles rested most of their starters on both sides of the ball. Hertz, Sanders, Brown, and Smith didn't play on offense. So if you want to discredit what the Dolphins did and how they played because they were playing against backups, have at it I guess. Seems like a stressful, ulcer-forming way to go through a fun game but hey you do you. At least you can tell yourselves and whoever else listens to you how smart you are to have doubts about a team that never wins anything. Way to go out on a limb with that take, we all know none of this matters come week one. All the good feelings most of us are feeling right now, largely based on how Saturday went, the Miami Dolphins played many of their starters. I imagine the reason for that was that the Dolphins had tummy aches on Thursday morning and cancelled the joint practice with the Eagles and Mike McDaniel wanted to get more looks. Makes sense to me, many starters played into the second quarter and many of them played very well, an added bonus is that I don't think anybody got injured too badly. That's a major plus as the Dolphins take the next two weeks to prepare for week one. Tua Tagovailoa going up top to Tyreek Hill on the first play of the game was pure nirvana. I talked back in July about the throw Tua had to Tyreek in practice that just about brought the earth to a standstill. Tons of folks crapped all over it and said he had to do it in a game. Well, Tua Tagovailoa did just that on the first play of the game and I'm rather sure the force of it caused tidal waves in the Pacific Ocean, love the fact that Mike McDaniels gave the people what they wanted right out of the gate. We wanted Tua to Tyreek deep and that's exactly what we got, the blocking was excellent on the play. There wasn't anyone anywhere close to Tua and he uncorked one, also, Cedric Wilson was open crossing the field as well. It's nice to know that kind of play which we'll see plenty of especially when Jalen Waddell is the guy doing the crossing, can yield big yards. I imagine we'll see several plays off that play action. I say that because it seems that most of the passing plays Miami has been running come off that play action. I'm fine with it as long as the running game is working, now, was that the greatest deep ball Tua has ever thrown? No, it was not. He'll tell you that himself, Tua on the deep ball to Tyreek. We had to decide with plays what openers we wanted to go with. Knowing that Tyreek was playing he wanted to go wall, the throw wasn't to my liking. If it was a better ball, more in front of Tyreek, we could have scored on the first play, if that ball was a couple of more feet inside, Tyreek scores. But that ball was still a good ball because he threw it when Tyreek wasn't at all open. He just trusted that he would run by the safety and let him inside. As I said and as Tua said, he needed the ball to be even more on the inside for it to be a score. As you can imagine and probably say, the world had a lot to say about the pass to Hill. The same tired lines about Tua not having the arm strength to put it over the shoulder and that he underthrew it, which he didn't, came out. Then the backlash from the Dolphins' faithful showing pass after pass of Mahomes underthrowing Hill got thrown around. Criticizing Tua especially when he does something good is such a formula and it's one that we're hopefully going to be seeing all year, the very next play. Tua did a boot to his left and hit Tyreek for another first down. Overall, Tua had a great night. There are other quarterbacks, cough Mac Jones cough, in the league that ended the preseason on a down ending and the fans have to carry that with them for the next two weeks. That's not us. We saw Tua and the first team offense have their way, albeit against backups, with the Eagles' defense. But can you imagine what would have been said if the first-team offense didn't look good against backups? I'll take this reality. We don't have to do much to wonder if this new offense can work. We saw that it could work. Now we just wait a few weeks to see it for real, oh, and this was funny to listen to, I've never seen somebody that fast in my life, Kvon Wallace of the Eagles says when asked about Tyreek going deep on the first play. The Miami Dolphins' offensive line had themselves a day on all aspects of blocking, only wanted the Miami Dolphins' offensive line to open up one hole that would get a running back 5 to 6 yards. Well, the offensive line decided to open up hole after hole like it was their job or something, 193 yards. The Miami Dolphins had 193 yards rushing and it was so much fun to see, sure, 
It was largely backups against backups but what am I supposed to say? That it's meaningless that the dolphins mauled. Pushed back and created tractor trailer sized holes all night? No, I'm going to go with the idea that I'm optimistic about the Miami Dolphins offensive line. Let it be said, that if against the Patriots the Dolphins can't run the ball at all I reserve the right to curse them out happy Gilmore style, Chase Edmonds didn't play, but Raheem Mostert, Miles Gaskin, Zaquandra White and Garrett Dokes all feasted on the Eagles defense that was getting manhandled seemingly every play, the pass blocking. Which has been pretty good all preseason, was very good once again. The Miami Dolphins want to operate the passing game, largely, out of misdirection and play action. For this to optimally work, the Dolphins need to be somewhat successful when they run the ball to get those linebackers and backside defensive ends chasing would-be ball carriers. This will give Tua easy throw after easy throw and will lead to chunk plays, one guy that had a good day was Greg Little. He made his preseason debut starting at left tackle. Larnell Coleman was playing that position so far but Little was the guy on Saturday. Little had a very solid day as he is still progressing through an injury. You hardly heard his name called by the announcers, which is a good thing. No news is good news. Here's what Mike McDaniel had to say about Greg Little. Greg Little might have won a job last night unless a number three tackle who appeals to team more becomes available in next three to four days. McDaniel, I thought he did a great job, last night. I'm proud of him. He played at a level higher than when he left before injury a couple weeks ago, I think it's fair to say that Greg Little is making the team. He looked infinitely better than Coleman. If he can be the swing tackle and be the de facto guy who spells Terran Armstead when he's not in there, which will happen at some point. That'd be great for this team, it was also nice to see a more sophisticated scheme being executed. Players were pulling and trapping. Guys were getting to the second level. It was a sight to see. It was certainly a bolstered game plan compared to the previous two games, Connor Williams, Robert Hunt, and Liam Eikenberg looked like they buried a few guys which is encouraging, all in all, it was a very good night for the offensive line. They should feel confident entering the regular season. The Miami Dolphins defense needs to get back in the lab and work on tackling because it wasn't anywhere near good, I hope this isn't going to be something that plagues the defense all year. I honestly don't think it will but I must say I didn't love what I saw. Easy for me to critique dudes that can break me in half with one hand, but I think they would tell you as well that they missed tackles that led to big gains, why I think this it's relevant to bring up is because it was starters that were missing the tackles. First, it was Jerome Baker who was pursuing a running back who caught the ball in the flat. He overran the guy and back easily picked up 8 yards on a play that should have been a 1 yard gain, a few drives later, Jalon Phillips dropped back in coverage and was running up to a receiver that caught a three-yard dump-off pass. Phillips whiffed at the guy's shimmy and the receiver went and picked up more yardage. The last one that stood out was the one that led to the Eagles' biggest play. Channing Tyndall bounced off Jason Huntley and he scampered for the only touchdown of the night for Philadelphia. Tyndall bounced off the guy like he wasn't even there. I realize that live tackling doesn't happen like it used to but man alive I think there's probably room to add a bit more. These guys are too skilled to miss completely or not wrap up. Yes, the other team practices too but I don't care. Make the play that's right in front of you. Hopefully, when they go over these plays in the film room they all realize that they need to break down a bit more and not worry about anything else besides keeping 4-yard gains 4-yard gains. Fortunately, tackling issues is something that can be fixed by practice and focus. I expect it to be cleaned up in 2 weeks.